have fun. Spring demo. This is the constant form for spring. Okay. This is the constant force spring demo, and Tom is about to get his arm broke off. Woo! Woodstock 2014! Ah! Okay. So, okay, let's all be safe now. So these are, I can't remember, the 25 each? Or John, stop it. 35 each. But whatever size they are, you got two of them, so if they're 25, that'd be a total of 54 pounds of power here. So you would have to apply at least 51 pounds of force this way to pull both of them, right? Mm -hmm. That would mm -hmm. make sense. Mm -hmm. If you can only apply 49 pounds, you're not going to pull them. So then if you want to give me the rod. Both of them? Or just one? Just one for now. <coughs> and so the way they work is they can either, you can anchor either end. You can anchor this end like we did. Or you could have anchored this end in your mechanism and then pulled, you know, whatever you want to do pulling. So the other thing is, these things, they're kind of sharp here. I mean, they're not sharp to cut, but you don't want your fingers anywhere close to here. I was pulling the little 10-pounder to show my son at home, and the thing slipped and snapped in here, and I just about broke my finger. So... This is what they were talking about on the, you know, from the safety perspective, if you had stuff loaded or preloaded it for the robots. Oh, so stuff like Store that. Energy, stored energy yeah. designs. So now you can pull this, and it starts to apply, so it's constant four springs. So if it's a 25-pound spring, it should be 25 pounds here or 25 pounds here. It doesn't matter where it's at. It starts at one and a half times the diameter. So if this is two inches here, at about three inches, you should have 25 pounds of force. So, and what they said, why we did two, if you pull this out like this, see it could twist, and then it could curl on itself. A stable way of mounting them is, you want to do this, Jonathan? Or? Yeah. Can you both of them at the same time? Yeah. Ooh, okay. So why don't you do two on that side? Oh, oh. oh we're going to split. Yeah. Not real fast. Oh. So that's, you see, if you put them back to back, then they actually supposedly won't curl on each other. So it's a safer way of applying 50 pounds of force if you can. Okay, let it back. See how this one kind of, we had it a little bit off there. Actually kind of curled a little bit. So then get it back. And then the other thing, you can actually interlace them. So, and I don't know how you would do that. I was just reading up on it. You could intersperse this spring inside of this spring here and it's effectively double it. But, I don't know how you would actually get it in there. You, you, and you can actually, what they said too, <coughs> is you could have this one turned over and have it start here, but then you don't have quite as far as extension. So, And you can look up the dimensions. So they have a length that you want to do. So if you need to apply tension over 20 inches, you could get a spring that can do that. Some of them can go shorter distances, some can go quite long. But then you have to make sure you guide that so it doesn't curl on itself. But this is supplying the same amount of force all the way. So what do you think? What's the purpose of this demonstration? Are we going to look? Well, what did we test this fall, you remember? Uh, in the build season, what did we test for a kicker? Uh, we tested, we tested a uh, rotating sort of catapult uh, that we that in our in our prototype we simply had it hooked up to a motor. But the ultimate plan was that we'd have it spring loaded with something akin to one of those, and yeah. uh, it would just kind of and kick the ball. You mean the shoot shoe? Yeah, the shoot shoe. The shoot shoe. 
Yeah. So what this does, it's just like a spring, you know, the spring that has the two hooks on the end, like what um, Eden Prairie was using. They would just hook it on and then they would pull it. That's a spring. Um, you also have compression springs, that there, which we got a whole box of if anyone wants to take one home and play with it. You can press on it, um, but they're very, very tight. You have um, surgical tubing, which we tried on the kicker, mm -hmm. but the problem that a lot of teams found this year is the surgical team or tubing as it got, it, it's not a constant force of spring, so it's tighter out here than it is here, you know, wherever you're pulling it from. Plus it tends to stretch over time. So this one I think is good for 4,000 cycles like this. You could go 4,000 times. 3,998. Yeah, now, you'll, now we're down to 3,997. Probably going to lose the championship because of that. Is that? <laughs> we'll, we'll have lost the championship. We're going to run out. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll hit 4,000 in the last 10 seconds of the final, final match. Yeah, and then all of a sudden it'll be snap. Yeah. We just, <gasps> just Einstein field erupts in flames. But so this is something the CAD team or, you know, the designers or whoever wants to apply constant force, whether it's here or out here. How much up and down force is there on that when you pull it out? It will follow the, the force is right here. No, but if you take and pull this out a foot and then you try to move it up or down, is there anything preventing it from going down? Well, like it's, a tape measure? you don't want to bend it back. You know, if I was to push this down, that would bend on it. That would be damaging for it. Right, but one of the the thoughts was, was for last year, one of our hopes was to have used like a big tape measure to extend a hook that went out and grabbed the bar on the pyramid. Okay. And but we were trying to get something that was strong enough to hold up the weight of that hook as we came out, and then latched onto it and then reel it back in. And how strong is that? Well, it's pretty strong. Ten pounds? I, I guess I don't know. You'd have to okay. use your power measurement thing. Well, uh, we probably have to bend it back to see what, what point it's at. So, yeah. Okay. So this is the same thing as a spring. It's actually probably pretty compact. I mean, you think of what you got, like uh, what Eden Prairie had. It's compact from a thing, mm -hmm. or you know, this dimension. Right. The key thing is it's constant, so it's right. well, the 25 other, here or 25 here. Right, but the compactness is very nice too because in the kicker, the ball shooter design that we've half made up for this year's robot, one of the problems is is to use extension springs. You know, the arm on our robot is only about this long. And since extension springs can generally never go more than two to one, you need to, if you want, eight inches of travel, you have to have a 16 inch, or you have to be able to pull that back. You know, you've got eight inch, or eight inches of wasted space is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Whereas with that, you've only got maybe three or four inches okay. of wasted right. space. Right. Um, so. And then the other thing is you can get different size springs. So this is 25, 225s. What, uh, I don't know if anyone noticed from 2232, Anoka, they had four springs and they were 25 pounds each. So essentially four of these, they had them lined right up, which gave them 100 pounds of force. You can mix and match these. So we got 40 pounders, you could put a 40 here and a 25 here and a 10 here, and then you'd have essentially what, 75 pounds just in the three springs, or you can do two and a half, fifty. You can mix and match any way you want. Same type of thing you see in the tape measure or those little badge things, like what we used on the... It's kind of like the inverse of this, where they tension it up and then they hook it up to the string or whatever you're trying to retract. Yeah. So actually, what they, yeah, that's basically what they've done. Same thing what we used on a potentiometer tension. Straight pot. Yep. So what about the accuracy like in terms of if you release it say from four inches, right? It goes and 
the force at the end of the spring, will it be more or less the same if we again release it from the four inch? Like, yeah. So is that the idea? That, so here's 25 pounds of force. Here's 25 pounds of force. And here's 25 pounds of force. Wherever, once you pass that initial section there, the one and a half <laughs> diameter, it's constant force of whatever it's rated for. So if you have a ball here, and regardless of where you release you know, from four inches or six inches, so you're saying the ball would just go the same distance? And it hits it, or is that different? Well, it's applying the same level of force, yeah. Does that make sense, logically? I mean, yeah. if I, what Serini's asking is if I have it here, 25 pounds of force, and I release it, or if I have it here, 25 pounds of force, and I release it. I guess what you're getting is you're going to get a different <coughs> shooting into the ball, lengthwise. But. Because of the velocity? I mean, so. Oh, well, yeah, I think. Well, you're, you're, if you're supplying a constant 25 pounds of pull, in theory, you're going to continue to accelerate until you run out of something. You run out of distance and yeah. it hits and whatever. So, I mean, if you imagine something that was 100 feet long and you pulled it and, you know, it was 25 pounds of pull and you let go of it, it would, you know, start out with 25 pounds of pull but it would be going slowly because you just released it, but 20 feet later it would be going really fast, um, although I'm sure there's some kind of terminal velocity just because of the materials involved. Um, so what happens if they let go? <laughs> well, that's, I was actually wondering that myself because it, it, I, it seems like the, the pipe's going to hit Amy and we're going to be in trouble. <laughs> Well, I mean, just kind of letting it go, this is... I was wondering what happens if you keep pulling it until you're all the way out of stuff and it goes... <laughs> and sucks itself well, back in. That sounds rather I mean, weird. The problem me. is, I guess they kind of scared me when I read that. You know, they said you really want to guide it because it can curl on itself. And after what happened the other day at home, you know, it didn't curl, it just slipped. Mm -hmm. You know, so you get a little anxious. Well, it seems a little hard to imagine it curling, at least with that width and that short a distance, um, as long as you've got force on it. Yeah. And it's when you let go of it, and suddenly it's free to just, you know, do whatever it wants to do. There's a difference in the sun, right? Yeah, that's pretty good. That's 25 pounds. Hmm? Yeah, I, I think the thing that's hard for a ball shooter is one of those on each side. <coughs> 50 pounds. Um, or you could do the 80. But the nice thing, too, is you can try different ones, I think, right. pretty as easily. As long as the inner diameter and the mounting holes and stuff like that are the same or similar. So. Um, no, we're just like we're cleaning up in like two minutes. So. So what happened?